very inquisitive. If anybody has anything dangling from them or shiny, uh, they, they automatically want to come over and have a look. Quite often when we're down cleaning, obviously we have to go in the enclosure, we'll clean a lot of the, the overflows of the, the waterfalls. You know, My head's actually ended up in the, the pouch of the pelican as they're, they're finding out what, what's going on down there. My name's Sean Meakin and uh, I'm a, a bird keeper here at Edinburgh Zoo and I've been working here for about 10 years on the bird section. So this is a, a, a sort of revamped area, previously our, our old duck ponds which just had a, a straight path from, from bottom to top. It's a really nice immersive exhibit with, as you can see, lots of nice foliage around the, the, the whole exhibit. Now it's a lot more open uh, and the pelicans uh, within this exhibit have two nice big pools. You see, they, they love being centre of attention as well Unt until people are beginning to show us some attention. <laughs> 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 um, we have three males and three females. The, the four older birds are about five years old now and they're all siblings. Uh, and we have two younger females as well. We're hoping we'll pair up with some of the males and uh, eventually form a, a breeding group. And you get really close to the pelicans. Uh, and I think you know a lot of people don't realise the size of them as well. So, but these guys in particular are, uh, are sort of African species and they do migrate as well. Um, well, in the wild, they eat fish. We feed them on some uh, pollen, roach, tilapia, trout. Uh, and if we get any other, other fish in, uh, freshwater fish in, we'll feed them on that. We've been talking to them. What have you been saying to them? Well, just like, well, hello, and oh, that's my. Oh, oh. This one's come to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Got really big beaks, and it's really cool how little like, cool. because fish. everyone knows these are tiny, and, and compared like to their them. beaks. Hello. Hi, oh, yeah. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I get a cuddle. They, they do fly. Um, what we do though is we will, um, we will basically. Uh, essentially clip the feathers on the, the, the wings, uh, which is just like getting your nails cut. Um, and every time the birds will go through a moult, uh, the feathers will grow back. So we just keep the uh, keep the, the, the feathers trim, which prevents them from getting too much height. And I think interestingly, if you look at the you know, the, the shape of the beak as well, the, the, the pouch just looks you know the, the, the bottom part of the beak looks like it's a nice thin little pouch, uh, and that, that lower mandible is almost like a net. Uh, and the, the upper part of the bill actually has a lot of ridges on it, uh, and a, a nice big sharp hook at the end. So it's almost like their whole head is is, is acting just like a, a big fishing net. The, so that pink hue that comes through in the feathers is uh, is, is to do with the, the freshwater fish to get the red fins. So that um, that carotenoid pigment just comes through, and for a, a white feather species, it does it does give a bit of a, a pink coloration to them. It's, it's really really interesting to say that they're, they're uh, they are young at the moment, um, and they're just sort of developing the personalities and the, the group structures as well. So we've got a couple of different age groups. Uh, so it is really nice to sit and observe them and and watch that group structure change. What are you wanting to go and see? Monkeys. Monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. You're more excited about the monkeys. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>